This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Emil Zwayne is not dead. Please note, Emil Zwayne is not dead. Thank you. I've been clearing that up all week. <laughs> it's Wretched Radio. What did I say? Whatever it was, it must have been clumsy and unclear because I was getting emails too. I received one when I had mentioned a friend of Emil Zwayne died at an early age, unexpected, 54 years old, just died. Nobody knew. There was not some prognosis, a reminder, life is fleeting. And I thought, in fact, Joey, your notes said Emil Zwayne's friend died. Yes, because I barely caught it, but I knew it was a little bit I unclear. didn't for a minute. I waited well, till the very my end. my apologies and... for not making that eminent, especially to Emil Zwayne. Dude, didn't mean to kill you. <laughs> I'm glad you're alive. And Mrs. So Emil Zwayne, she's like, wait a minute. You know, I, there, there were a lot of people asked about that, and, and, and so many people, no, everybody that asked about it, it was one of those times, I, I, I don't know why, but I was like, ah, it's just so good to be a Christian, and, and, and Christians writing in that weren't like, hey, you moron, he's not dead, it was none of that, it was this heart, please tell me Emil isn't dead, that, 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 that would be horrible, he's such a dear man, it was all concern, and then it was even concern to the level of, well, you're, this is the first I've heard of his death, but maybe Living Waters is keeping it quiet because, it, you know, sensitivity to the family. Everybody was so thoughtful and so kind, and I went, oh, I just I just love being a Christian, and I love it that Emile Wayne is not dead. I repeat, Emile Wayne is not Pretty dead. sure easy does, too. <laughs> <laughs> no one was more saddened by news of his death than and him. Emil himself, e- e- Easy from Living Waters. He's I I don't know what is he's he's the executive director or something there. He's 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 an Arab, who's Ray Comfort's son-in-law, who happens to be Jewish. Okay, Emil's the Arab, Ray's the Jew, and and yet two of the dearest people on the planet who get along so sweetly. There's there's your Middle East conundrum solved right there. You get everybody saved, Jew, Muslim, everybody gets saved. It'll it'll quiet down over there. I don't expect that to happen, by the way, and that's biblical. Hold on. If you're looking for an explanation for what's going on even now in Baghdad and Iran and why there is no peace in the Middle East, I would like to remind you that it is biblical. Let me take you to Genesis and chapter 16. Abraham, old Abraham, he was... He was just a little bit older than Paul Washer when he and his wife got pregnant this last time. Abraham has made a promise that he is going to have a son. Sarah laughs. She's old too. Shouldn't be having babies, either one of them at this age. What do they do? They take matters into their own hands, specifically Sarah pushing Abraham. It doesn't look like God's going to come through with this promise. So be intimate with my handmaid, my bond servant, Hagar, and have a baby. That was a Middle East custom. That was not uncommon, so it wouldn't have been, no, it was wrong, but that was customary. Abraham sinned, did it. She gets pregnant, and now Sarah is kind of angry and sour toward the woman who is pregnant, carrying her husband's son that isn't her baby. That's the setup for Genesis 16. Hagar's being mistreated. And so she says, I'm running away from my mistress. An angel of the Lord said to Hagar, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. I will give... Now, she spe- the angel is speaking to Hagar, not to Sarah, because you remember Abraham has been promised that he is going to be the father of what? Many nations, many descendants. This is the angel now speaking to Hagar. You are now pregnant. You'll give birth to a son, and I will give you more descendants than you can count. You are to name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard about your misery. Okay, so we see we've got two two half-brothers here. They're both going to be in the ancestry of many people, great nations, and I would even go so far as to say two world religions. The text continues about Ishmael. This son of yours will be a wild one, free and untamed as a wild donkey. He will be against everyone, and everyone will be against him. He will live at odds with the rest of his brothers. Who are the descendants of 
Ishmael. Um, the, the Muslims claim ancestry to Ishmael. They believe that he was the, the promised son for Abraham. They are the descendants of Ishmael in the Middle East, who are the descendants of Isaac, Jewish people, and then by extension, Christians. Genesis 16, Ishmael's descendants, whether you think it's the religion of peace or just those Middle Eastern nations, will always be at war with his brothers as the descendants of a wild donkey. Will there be peace in the Middle East? Uh, not, not, not until the Prince of Peace returns. Not, not if Genesis 16 is true, and it certainly has demonstrated that it is. Send your emails to idea at wretched.org. And by the way, speaking of the Middle East, if I could, the persecution for Christians over there, it is not lightening up. It is nasty. I don't know if you saw the year-end video that we sent out about Bible League International, <sighs> Middle East, Asia, India, Africa, Christians are getting shellacked. The scars that they carry, the imprison. Hold on, here's here's one in the in in the far uh, the, the, the 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 not bladder rain the middle uh, the the top rain uh, the it's the uh, the rain early rain, I think is the name of the church. It's Presbyterian. Yep. There was a pastor there who has been preaching faithfully about the separation of church and state, basically preaching to his people, if, if we get persecuted, we submit. We submit to the, We are not rabble-rousers. We are not revolutionaries. We submit to the government. Nevertheless, the government, the godless government of China, saw him as such a threat. Why? Because he's proclaiming the gospel faithfully. The church is growing. God arrested subversion of the government, they said. He was just sentenced to a mere nine years in a work camp. Highly unlikely he will survive if he has to endure that sentence. Why? Because he's faithfully proclaiming the word. And I will do a shout out for Bible League. Christians in China don't have Bibles. Christians in the Middle East, they do not have Bibles. Please answer their prayers. Send a Bible to our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, China, persecuted regions around the globe. It's $5 per Bible. However many you can send every month, the better, because our Christian brothers and sisters, every single time when they're being persecuted and they're asked, how can we pray for you? They'll say, pray for faithfulness. They don't say, pray for protection. Don't pray that you know our feet won't be beat. Pray, pray that we'll be faithful. And if we could get a Bible, that'd be really great. $5, wretched.org slash Bible, wretched.org slash Bible. It is with Bible League International, a faithful ministry for decades. An email sent to idea at wretched.org from Richard. My church recently gave a report from the members who participated in Operation Christmas Child, in which they stated that while they were at the packing center, they, quote, prayed over the gift boxes. I'm confused by that. Praying over an inanimate object. Your thoughts? That, 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 fair question. We see that, don't we? we? We see prayers happening these days in evangelical Christianity, different locations, different postures, different activities. For instance, prayer walks. There's a part of town that we are really concerned about, so we're going to walk around that town and we're going to pray while we go. If, if, is there anything wrong with that? My answer is not necessarily. Is there anything wrong with praying over boxes that God would bless them, the message that is inside, that somebody would get saved? We're, we're praying over a pallet of Bibles. Here you go, Bible League. We're praying about these Bibles, that God would send his word and that it would cut, that it would convict sinners, that it would encourage the saints. And is it wrong to be standing over the pallets and doing that? No, it's not wrong at all. As long as we understand that our proximity to the object that we're praying for has no more efficacy than if we are 10 miles away from it, it that it isn't some sort of, that, that the prayers become more powerful because we're walking around a town praying for the salvation of people. As long as we understand that it doesn't add any strength to our prayers, that's fine, especially if it helps you concentrate, if it helps you to focus, that's good. It doesn't have any more power. So if somebody thinks so that, okay, now this is, we got it. We've got to be near these boxes, Bibles, or, or zip code for the prayer to work. Now well, that's wrong. And I would just say, change your thinking on that and then, and then pray any way that you want to. And please note, if you pray away from the boxes, Bibles, or town, it's just as strong. What makes our prayers efficacious? It's not our location. It's Jesus Christ. 
Now, having said that, there is something that the Bible indicates can demonstrate to God the sincerity and the urgency of your request. And that's a little old something called fasting. I don't believe that it's mandated, but it is described regularly as if it should be something of a regular feature for the Christian. Not mandated. You're not sinning if you don't. What does fasting accomplish? Does it make our prayers stronger? No. It simply says to God, I'm knocking harder. I'm petitioning even harder here, Lord. I'm I'm really, really urgent about this. But the only way that their prayer is received, it does not depend on how many calories you consume or not. It is based on Jesus. He is our high priest. He is the one that makes our prayers efficacious. God listens to them, not because we fast. He listens to them because of Christ. So keep praying, no matter where you are. This is Wretched Radio. 